Hello, and welcome back to the Philippines in Silent Hunter 4. It's December 14th, 1941, two days after we've come back in from our first war patrol in the USS S-38, a Holland-type S-boat. And during our absence, the Philippines and Manila in particular have received quite a beating from the Japanese. Major damage has been done to the island while we were out. So coming back in, we're basically... Uh, restocking supplies, reloading torpedoes, maybe grabbing some personal effects from the shore because the situation is not looking good here in the islands and there's no guarantee that we'll be coming back. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to do to refit the S-38 to get her back out to sea as soon as possible. No equipment upgrades available, not surprising. Uh, no surface radar. Uh, our four inch deck gun remains the same. No crew members are approved for promotion at the moment, but we do have a couple of medals to give out. We've got two Navy Commendation medals, and sort of like real life, this is, uh, with only two medals to give out, it's not really representative of the good job that everyone did on the patrol. We've got a whole submarine here of people doing their jobs, and all the jobs are important. I mean, I joked last time about uh, machinist mates being the greatest, but I mean, really, every department or division on a ship is there for a reason, and they're doing a specific job, and, you know, it's all a team. So, we've got, we only have two medals to give. I mean, who the hell are we going to give these to? I mean, who, who would you say was most critical to the mission being successful last time? I don't know. Uh, sensors guys, maybe? Um... Or do you give them right to the uh, the officer of the decks uh, for controlling the ship? The one thing to consider when giving these medals out is that they do increase the efficiency or the proficiency of the sailor that you give it to. So it is sort of a nice way to boost someone to make their skills better. So uh, also like real life, maybe you don't give the medal to the person who is most deserving of it. You give it to some jack wagon who's, uh, you know, <laughs> holding everyone back. And, uh, and they're the ones that get the medals, but, you know, we'll, we'll try to avoid that, I guess, if we can. Alright, so why don't we just go and uh, start at the top, and we'll give it to our control room officer here, Morris W. Bixler, Ensign Bixler. We'll give him a Navy Commendation medal. And number two, I think we're going to give it to the Sonar Chief here, uh, Chief Wayne S. Williamson. So now he's got a Commendation medal. Also, we want to try to get the uh, the sensors guys skills up so that they can detect ships a little bit easier because they start with a pretty low uh, experience. Mark 10 torpedoes now refilled. So weapons are good to go. Crew is good to go. Uh, that's about it. Let's take a look at a mission and uh, and see where they're going to send us next for our patrol number two. December 14th, 1941 to Jim Stavridis, USS S-38. Depart on December 23rd, 1941, so a couple of days from now, actually. CTF-N3 suspects a large concentration of IGN units in the waters off southern Formosa. Proceed to an area southwest of the coast and conduct combat operations within 75 nautical miles of the patrol area's center point for 36 hours, so about a day and a half. Additional direction will be provided via message traffic. Make daily reports as necessary to Task Force 3. Objective Patrol, Southern Formosa. Here we are, dockside in Manila, the game not showing the extensive destruction that we would be seeing right now uh, in and around the docks. Uh, heavy airstrikes from the Japanese yes, would have reduced this Price whole area to nine. rubble. Lots yes, of smoke, hulks uh, sinking in the water. And here we are departing in the middle of the night, two minutes past midnight, to get us out of the area under cover of darkness so we can avoid any of those patrol planes or uh, scout bombers looking for submarines. So what exactly is happening here in the Philippines right now? Well, it's December 23rd, 
So we have two Japanese landing forces heading towards us from the north and from the southeast. The landing to the north began right on December 8th, the same day as Pearl Harbor. Two days after conquering the small outer islands, the Japanese began their main landing on Luzon on the 10th. By that time, all of the Far East Air Forces protecting the Philippines were essentially destroyed, with over half being lost on the first day in about a 45 minute time span. Out of an original force of 91 P-40 Warhawks and 34 B-17s, only 14 B-17s will survive to escape to Australia. Also on the 10th, our home port of Cavite Naval Base was heavily damaged by Japanese bombers. Admiral Thomas Hart, commander of the Asiatic Fleet, has withdrawn all of our surface ships, leaving only the submarines for the moment, but it seems likely that we won't be staying long either. On December 12th, a second Japanese landing force came ashore to the southeast at Legazpi, about 150 miles away. Our intrepid leader, General Douglas MacArthur, commander of the U.S. Army forces in the Far East, has barely been heard from this whole time, and in fact, he will sulk for two crucial weeks before finally arriving at his headquarters. The legend of Douglas MacArthur as, quote, America's greatest general is well documented, thanks to MacArthur himself, mostly. He was very concerned with public relations and his image, which did prove to be an asset in World War II when America ran out of money and war bonds were the only thing keeping the fight going. But here we see the general as he really was, an arrogant egomaniac whose mood would change from over-optimistic to panic when reality conflicted with his view of events. Those who worked for MacArthur described him as having two speeds. When he was good, he was brilliant. And when he was bad, he was terrible, and there was no in-between. Part of the problem was that MacArthur surrounded himself with yes-men, the most notorious of which was his chief of intelligence, Major General Charles Willoughby. Willoughby was the one who provided MacArthur with reports, which just so happened to agree with what the general already believed, that the Japanese had no plans to invade the Philippines until at least mid-1942. When news of Pearl Harbor's attack came through at two in the morning, staff officers tried mobilizing, but no orders came from MacArthur. At five in the morning, commander of the Far East Air Forces, Major General Lewis Brereton, tried to see MacArthur at the headquarters building to get permission to launch bombing raids on Formosa. This was in accordance with the war plan Rainbow Five, a strategy drawn up in 1939 for use in the event of war against Japan and Germany. Brereton was trying to get his part of the plan in motion, but MacArthur's chief of staff told him to wait. Thirty minutes later, at half past five, a telegram came in from Army Chief of Staff George C. Marshall, ordering MacArthur to execute the war plan. Nothing was done. General Brereton tried twice more throughout the morning to get permission to get his planes airborne, again being denied by MacArthur's staff. Brereton finally spoke directly to MacArthur at 10.15, now eight hours after the attack on Pearl, and got permission for an afternoon strike against Formosa. However, too much time had already been lost, and at 12.40 in the afternoon, incoming Japanese air raids caught the Far East Air Force on the ground, arming and refueling its aircraft. Half of the American aircraft were destroyed in 45 minutes, and the rest would be lost over the next few days. General MacArthur later denied having any conversations with Brereton, nor of having any knowledge of recommendations to bomb Formosa, effectively washing his hands of any blame for the debacle. Now, as we sail out of Manila Bay, Japanese forces are advancing across Luzon. The initial landings at Apari have been joined by additional landings along the west coast at Vigan and the Langian Gulf, proceeding south to Manila. To the south, the other invasion force at Legaspi will continue its advance up the peninsula, attacking the city from the south. MacArthur's troops, suffering equipment shortages, offer little resistance and will constantly fall back. Today's date is significant because this is the day, December 23rd, that the general will order a full retreat to the Bataan Peninsula to fortify and wait for reinforcements. MacArthur himself will retreat to a bunker on the island of Corregidor, out in the middle of Manila Bay, earning him the derisive nickname Dugout Doug. 
Because he could not allow himself to consider that he might be wrong about the Japanese plans, he had made no effort to stockpile supplies or ammunition on the peninsula ahead of time. Most units abandoned their supplies during the frantic retreat to the peninsula, and though several barges landed supplies from across the bay, there was hardly enough to sustain nearly 100,000 people for a protracted siege. Despite MacArthur's confident claims that his men could hold out, Everyone on Bataan knew that they were finished, and many held him personally responsible. After several months of fighting, President Roosevelt ordered MacArthur to relocate to Australia, and in March, he, his family, and his headquarters staff left the island in PT boats. Finally out of options, Generals Sharp and Wainwright surrendered their troops to the Japanese commander on May 8th. 60,000 starving and sick U.S. and Filipino soldiers along with 38,000 civilians, became Japanese prisoners of war. Thousands would die on the subsequent Bataan Death March as Japanese transported them north, with some estimates as high as 18,000 dead. Overall, no blame was ever officially cast for this entire debacle, as it was concluded that no one was singularly at fault because of the confusion of the surprise war. However, MacArthur would again repeat this pattern of behavior a decade later as overall commander of UN forces in the Korean War. Despite a mountain of evidence that Chinese forces were streaming into North Korea to counterattack UN troops, MacArthur confidently assured President Truman that there was little chance of Chinese intervention. And if they did, they would not stand up to a modern Western army. General Willoughby, the same chief of intelligence who had passed incorrect reports about the Philippines, again cherry-picked reports in Korea, painting a picture that agreed with what MacArthur already believed and ignoring any contrary evidence. In October of 1950, a dismissive yes, MacArthur met with President Truman on Wake Island yes, to discuss the progress of the war. MacArthur later wrote that the idea of Chinese intervention came up casually, and he assured the president that it was not a concern. Truman, though, remembered things a little bit differently, with worries about the Chinese being his primary reason for attending the meeting in the first place. Just a week later, on November 6th, a panicked MacArthur reported that men and material in huge numbers were flowing over the Yalu bridges. MacArthur had refused to see the signs that the Chinese were sneaking 120,000 men under his nose, and the counterattack drove UN forces out of North Korea in what Secretary of State Dean Acheson described as the greatest defeat of American arms since the Second Battle of Bull Run. MacArthur will eventually be relieved of command during that war, but that's far in the future, and right now what we have to deal with is him blaming our submarine force for letting the Japanese land on the island. So let's get back to the mission at hand and see if we can prove old dugout Doug wrong. Merry Christmas, everybody. December 25th, 1941, 621, and we're up here off of Formosa in our patrol area. And down at Periscope Depth here, 50 feet, we've picked up something ahead of us on the passive sonars that's most likely a convoy. So here, listening out ahead of us, sort of a slow... Uh, screw sound. Contact. Warship moving away, bearing five. Moving away Long at range. five degrees. Sounds like we have uh, a couple of different. Yeah, there's some fast sc uh, screws out to the right as well. So we have at least a couple of ships and uh, maybe a large convoy. Hard to tell it at this early point, but let's make a mark on the map here. There, we have an estimated uh, bearing we can keep track of. Let's pour on the coal and we'll surface so we can get uh, maximum speed and try to close on whatever these ships are. If they're heading away from us, that might be problematic. Top speed in the Holland here is, uh, as we've seen before, is only about 11 knots. Yes, so pretty pretty slow we'll be hard pressed to keep up with anyone if they're actually uh if they have any sort of speed on them but uh 
If they're cruising at less than 10, then maybe. In fact, I'm just going to take off the, uh, the battery charging at the moment so that we have both propellers available. Like we talked about last time, the S-boats have a, uh, a U-boat style arrangement where it's a direct drive mechanism. So it goes directly from the engines to the propeller with no motors in between. And so when you're charging the battery, you have to take the starboard propeller offline because it's just going to be spinning to do the charging. So you, you have limited propulsion. And if you're in a situation like this where you're trying to catch somebody... I mean, we barely used up any of the battery when we were underwater, so I'm just going to go full propulsion to try to squeeze a few extra knots out of this thing. I guess we're actually up to like 13 knots, so a little bit faster than what I was thinking. But we've got two ships out ahead of us now. Here's an escort zooming along pretty fast. Just see them there. They've got two ships out there, uh, bearing a 333. I see one ship and one merchant. And then it's, it's sort of hard to tell, but scanning the horizon, I, I don't see anything else yet. Oh, I guess the, uh, the lookouts do, though. There's a third ship. Either way, that's enough to make a report. Back to headquarters, so uh, 1225 at 737 now. Position, longitude 120, latitude 2148, convoy sighted, estimated speed 10 knots, course of 15. So while it is great that we've reported this convoy, I mean, what are, what are the odds that we're going to even catch up to it to be able to circle around in front to get a shot? I don't know. No point in giving up yet, though. Let's stick with them and we'll see what we can do. Alright, so if I had to guess, I would say this convoy is heading up here to the port at Toko. And I've been thinking about it, and I think we're just going to call it off. Because uh, we're going to need some time to get around them. And even if we do run around them, we are likely to end up in shallow waters you know, hitting up against the side of the island, yes, so I think it's a lost Head cause at this point. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So back down to one-third, and we're going one, to uh, head back out to the northwest, back into more open water, and maybe see if we can find a target that is uh, that's more doable. We just didn't have the angle on them, that's all. And this boat does not have the speed to make up those deficiencies. After continuing to patrol for another day, we've just gotten a radio message. Let's check and see what that is. Uh, which one? Is this one? It's the most recent. Uh, today's the 26th now. It's 1030 at night. I think it's this one here from Com Sub Pack. Conduct uh, combat operations in the northern Luzon Straits. RTB at your discretion. So basically, we have fulfilled the mission requirements of patrolling for 36 hours up here in the Straits, and so now it's up to us to do what we want to do. And we're actually going to stay in the area, because I think right here, with the invasion still going on down to the south, um, and Japanese forces coming out of Formosa here, I think we're sort of right in a hot spot that are going to be high traffic areas. So we're going to stay here for uh, the foreseeable future, and we'll just continue patrolling. Welcome back, it's just before 4.30 in the afternoon and I have just spotted smoke on the horizon. You can see it there between the periscope housing and the lookout's head blowing off to the left. So uh, full port rudder, we're going to swing around and head off in that direction. You can see the sun is just setting below us. There's the smoke 
touching the horizon. No signs of stacks yet, so they're pretty far away. There's two, three, uh, four, four smoke columns. It looks like we've got a major convoy. Five. So we're currently heading northeast, and they're sort of yes, behind sir. us. So they're out to the uh, to the northwest. Yes, we're going to secure from charging the batteries because I want full propulsion. Not sure which way these guys are going. The smoke trails are bending to the left, but that might just be the wind. That's not necessarily indicative of what direction they're going. There we go. We're just seeing some uh, masts just above the horizon. Right there looks like maybe a flag flying on top of a mast. We know that the height of our bridge gives us a horizon line of about five miles away, so these guys are maybe just over five miles out from us, somewhere in that vicinity. Lookouts have identified two of them, so we're going to start marking and see what direction that, the, that they're actually heading in. To redraw the reference line. Uh, okay, this is actually so. This is saying that it's 9.5 nautical miles out that we're catching them. So uh, pretty far out. And I guess that makes sense that we wouldn't see any of the ships at uh, at over twice the distance from the visible uh, horizon line. All right, some time has passed. I've been making marks. It looks like these guys are heading to the north and uh, slightly off to the right, maybe about, I don't know, 15 degrees, 20 degrees, somewhere like that. So now I want to take a rough estimate of these guys' speed. We're tracking one of the ships, and just as he passes mark six on the map there that I made along his path, We'll hit the chronometer and we'll take a one minute reading and we'll see where he ends up and then we'll take a, uh, a relative distance between those two marks. It's, uh, it's going to give me an, a ballpark idea of how fast this guy is going using my little speed calculation that I worked out. If we take a 60 second distance and then times that by .03 we'll get a, an approximate speed for the ship. There's 45 seconds. And right as it reaches zero, we'll make mark seven. Three, two, one, mark. All right, secure that. We'll get that out of here. And then let's, uh, let's see what the... Okay, so this is coming up as... There's 350, there's 300... So it's sort of halfway between 300 and 350, about 325, but if we just say uh, 300 yards, we'll just call it that and then do our calculation. I'll put back in the um, estimated track of the ship there. And let's see then, 325 times 0 0.03 gives us a speed of 9.75 knots. In fact, if we just did 300 by 0 0.03, 9. So, 9 knots. We have an estimated speed of 9 knots for this convoy. So, we can at least just input that into the TDC now and then adjust it as necessary. We also know how fast we have to go. So, here we are. We're doing 13 knots right now. We are maxed out. Ship spotted. And based on this estimated track... Yeah, so we're looking at a base heading of 15 degrees. So looking at the TDC, that's showing us a parallel, which is not really the case. So let's throw in a... There we go. There's their estimated track of 15 degrees. So you can see that they're heading a little bit in our direction. 
and we'll just take some distance readings. Even though the, I mean, the TDC is going to keep showing up that they're more than five miles out, the 10,000 yards, but might as well just take, take some readings anyways. So yeah, now that we know what they're doing, we can decide how we're going to, uh, you know, try to attack this convoy. Pretty big convoy. Oh, what is this? We've got two unknowns out to the north. Is this... And a warship spotted bearing 314. What the fuck is this? What the fuck? We've got a second convoy. Jesus Christ. We're tracking one convoy, and here comes a second from the north, heading south. These guys are literally going to cross in the same <laughs> in the same convoy tracks, and we've been spotted by their escorts Chip already. Spot. All right, let's send off flash message to HQ. Second convoy spotted. And those fuckers already know that we're here. God damn, yeah, there's there's the original one. And we are just speeding into the arms of this northern yes, convoy. So let's break North off North to the right. Because yes, now we have some decisions to make. And we better make them soon, because we can't stay up on the surface for long, because these guys will start shooting at us. We have no element of surprise. We've lost all the surprise that we were going to have against these guys. What if we go around the north convoy... Yeah, maybe we'll try that. Here, let's let's pull this estimated track out. Maybe we just say fuck it to the north convoy, try to get around it, and then rejoin up with the southern convoy on the far side. Yeah. Ship spotted. Yeah, let's just let's just get way out. And then maybe come back in. There's Toko. There's no guarantee that they'll still be on this track at this point. We Ship don't spotted. actually know that that's where their destination is, but... I mean, we don't have any other information to make a, a uh, conclusion, so we might as well just assume that they're going to be on the same track. Well, the sun is rapidly Ship setting spotted. behind us. Two, six, six. Long range. There's that escort. Kind of a small ship, maybe just a sub chaser, but. And then three merchants. Four merchants out yonder. Uh, we still got plenty of battery juice. Yes, sir. Recharging batteries. Ship spotted. Here's a thought. How far away are we? from this other, from this uh, convoy number one. We're six miles out from their track. I wonder Ship spotted. if we came, four, if we came five, back around, three, we'll dive three, under the five, escort yes, and then come up on the far side. Good find, we'll direct further assets to intercept. Break contact, RTB at your discretion. Okay, thank you. So headquarters has been informed. So yeah, if we go fast and yes, deep sir. underneath, yes, and then maybe try to come up on the other side yes, in firing yes, position. Yes, I think that's what we're going to try to do. Calling away general quarters. Let's get everyone prepped for combat. Oh, here's this ship that we were tracking. Which is now for naught situation has changed appreciably within just a couple of minutes. Very unexpectedly. Okay, nice deep water. We've got over a thousand feet under the keel. Uh, what is that? Is that, is that a second escort? I guess that would make sense. One on the south, one on the north end. Oh, that's a round. 
Okay, I guess we're in firing range. I yes, thought we sir. had a little bit. Whew, a little bit more to go. Dive, Take her down. Dive. Yep, rounds incoming, splashing sort of all around us. Current depth, four, zero. All right. Underwater now. Let's pull everyone uh, off the main deck. We'll move all of our watchstanders down to the control room and into Hogan's Alley. We'll clear the decks, rig for depth charging. Actually, we'll put these guys in the damage control team. We're still in a hard turn to port. Yes, sir. So as we come around, I want to keep uh, keep the engines up at standard speed so we can get through the turn faster, and then once we're around, I can decide either to uh, rig for silent running or maybe just try to go, you know, full speed. Some of the sub-chasers don't have hydrophones, so I'm sort of rolling the dice here. Or at least if they do have hydrophones, they don't use them. There's oftentimes, uh, at least early in the war here, I've noticed some of the escort ships don't actually have, you know, a means to detect submarines. So yes, maybe we'll luck Two out ten. with this guy One, here. Because if he just goes to our last position, we'll pass underneath him. He'll go behind us and he'll he'll depth charge, you know, over here where we just were and we can be far away. Oh, so I t oh man, uh, I reloaded the the uh, the mods into this game and I forgot to put the sonar lines back in because uh, real fleet boat mod actually takes them out so that you just have to either mark them yourself or listen rely relying on your your sound man's uh, what you call it audio commands and I hate that. I don't like doing that. I like putting the uh, I like putting the lines back in because it better represents having an actual conversation with the sonar guy rather than just have him yelling at you and not being able to ask any sort of amplifying questions. Oh man, god damn it. But we'll be making this attack with no sonar lines, so if you think it's dumb that I use them, then feel vindication here that I have no choice. Until I exit the game and come back in, uh, yes, no sonar lines. Which is not the end of the world. I can do yes, it. Sir. It's just annoying. Yes, sir. It's not what I prefer. Okay, sub, sub chaser going nose to nose, and that second escort has joined him in it. That looks like a true blue destroyer, so I think we are not going to get away with this plan. Yep, they've got active sonar on us now. Not only passive sonar, but they're pinging the shit out of the ocean right now. Near sound contact, warship slow screws opening, bearing 240. Short range. Oh my god, I just heard a collision yes, alarm up ahead, or up above us, so flank speed. Let's drop a couple more feet down to 190, and let's begin a slow but steady turn to port. 10 degrees of rudder. Put a little bit of arc on the submarine so they do drop depth charges. Hopefully that will befuddle their aiming just a little bit. Man, where'd they go? That active sonar is now gone. What's our nearest contact? Bearing 130. 
short range crossing. Where is it? Uh, to my right. And sort of behind. Hmm. Heading northwest, back up towards the track of the first convoy. We've got a sonar contact on a merchant whose range is actually opening. I wonder if they've, uh, wonder if the, the other convoy has turned away. Yes, sir. Okay, we've made enough noise for long enough. Back down to Rig for Silent Running. Ahead one third. Let's see if we can shake these escorts. They're somewhere above us, circling in this neighborhood. We've got to try to get away from them now. Here's this destroyer doing a slow trawl. listening for us. Subchaser come to a complete stop, so they must have passive listening gear as well. Oh! Depth charges out from the other ship. He's making a high-speed run. than I thought. <sighs> okay, shaken but not stirred. Let's get the timer going. I like to do that minute of high-speed operations after the depth charges have um, sound contaminated the, the ocean. The echoes of that explosion should be reverberating for some time, probably well over a minute, but I just go with a minute just to be safe. And then we'll slow back down. Someone was saying also in the comments um, of the other videos, and this makes good sense, I'm, I just, I don't know if the game actually does it, but it might. They were saying that if one ship is actively pinging, that actually prevents the other ships from using their passive sonar at the same time because it's so loud, which makes total sense. I've actually been on the receiving end of pings. I know how loud they are, you know, even inside of a ship. Let's reset that. More explosions out behind us. Rattled us a little bit. Oh, we're sort of close. Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Let's change our depth. Maybe they've got us zeroed. And then it goes quiet again. So they're making uh, depth charge runs not even using active sonar at the moment. That's sort of unusual. And of course, because of that, you can see they're not super accurate. They're close enough to uh, to shake the boat up, but not not right on top of us. And now here comes the active. So, uh, looping back to what I was saying, if we're hearing active sonar, maybe we'll 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 do an experiment yes, this time. It feels scary to do it, but maybe once uh, if someone's doing active, we'll keep the speed up and try to just uh, noisily speed away if possible. Yes, sir. 
More charges on their way down. Hard to start. Unsure of how close these guys actually are to us. Oh, yep, he's doing a full spread. Launchers off the back rails. Full nine yards. This is a proper baptism of fire. On the last, uh, on the first patrol, we didn't really get knocked around this badly. This is their first real bad death charging. Here comes more. There's the charge within sight. Oh, exploding on our rear right quarter, knocking the ship over teetering back and forth on the keel. Yes, sir. New depth. Let's adjust the depth again and our heading. There was another uh, explosion off to the right. That was a little bit further away. Ten after five. Current depth, one, eight, two. We spotted the uh, the first convoy at four thirty. How are we doing? Thirty five seconds. <whistles> oh, there's the active. Oh man, do we just keep going after the minute is up? I don't know, it it feels wrong. <laughs> oh, let's try it. Yeah, there's that escort still pinging away. Yes, sir. I'm still at flank speed, at least for the moment. Yes, sir. Depth, two, zero. And we are right at the test depth for the S-boat, right at 200 feet at the moment. Just under it, I guess. Probably like 201. Yeah, 201. So we're getting the warning message up top. But uh, we'll be fine. Submarines can go significantly lower than their test depth as long as they're not damaged. Um, but that's not a thing that I like to do. Coming from nuclear power, I'm never comfortable with violating engineering safety margins. So I tend to keep it above the test depth for most of the time. If we have to, I think we can even take this pig down to like 300 or 350 feet. The danger is... The deeper you are in the water with more water pressure around you, depth charges can do more damage to you from further out because of the, the pressure shock being transmitted through the denser water. So these depth charges today that have been rocking us all over the ocean, if we were way, way down deep, they could actually be doing serious damage to the hull, maybe even sink us. So that's the trade-off. You can try to get under them like a Hollywood movie. You know, chief, we gotta get underneath them. 
you can keep going down, 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 but if they're tracking you and they know where you are, <clears throat> um, if they can center in on you and get a, a decently close hit, they can sink you. Yes, sir. I feel like we're making a ton of noise. I'm going to bring us back down to two-thirds. We'll do a minor depth change again as well. Because we are not sneaking away from these guys. Near sound contact. Bearing 199 short range. So coming up from behind, left side. Yes, sir. Hard to stop. We just lost the Hard sonar, so yes, possible sir. attack run. Flank speed and slam it back over to the right. Hard to starboard. We'll swing out of the way. Yes, sir. New course. Three, five. Yes, sir. Where is he now? Still closing at 191, short range. So, curious, why did he secure from active sonar? Do I hear him? He's passing overhead. Yes, sir. Rudder. Rudder. Rudder amidships, let's try to get the speed. Get the speed back up. Over the top of us. Yes, sir. Five, eight. <sighs> Start that timer again. We made the rapid uh, depth change. Yes, sir. New course. It's sort of dangerous to pull up yes, into possibly descending depth charges, but I don't know. I just I feel like they've got our our uh, depth dialed in now, so I just I need I feel the need to jink around a lot to try to avoid it. We have plenty of air. CO2 levels are negligible and we have plenty of battery left like 95% battery so we can continue on doing this for a while Oop. collision alarm right above us sounded off to the left yep bearing 332 short range opening slow screws there they are reset the timer again Not really on top of us anymore like they used to be. And we do have a thermal layer at around 160 feet, so that's helping us. We should actually stay underneath that. If we just cozy up right underneath that layer, that may help us escape from these guys. Alright, the minute's up. Back down to yes, one-third... We're technically still in rigged for silent running, so we'll just let the speed come back down. Let's see if they can track us this time. It's 20 after 5 in the afternoon now. We're right at 160 feet. Yes, sir. So I think we're I think we're right on that thermal layer. Let's try to drop a couple feet down. Long range? Is that a third warship? Because here's the nearest one. Slow uh, screws. Passing 242 short layer. range. Yeah, there's the thermal layer. At, right at 160 feet. So that should start help masking our sound. We're not masking it, but, uh, you know, deflecting the sound so it makes it sound like we're in a different location. Yes, 
Yes, sir. Two five nine. Let's go back up to two thirds to get us through the turn. Actually, let's lighten up on the rudder too. That'll let the speed come up. I hate just sitting at one knot through a hard overturn because that's not helping us escape. That's just making us sit in one spot. Somebody's closing at uh, from the left port side now. Two six six. Still slow. I think even with the active sonar, they can't quite figure out where we are, which is a good sign. If we can just confuse them for long enough, an inch away. Maybe we still have a chance at one of those two convoys. We just switched over to night lighting, so the sun has set. It's 524 now. We still have a party upstairs. Guys are hitting us with active sonar again. There's two, maybe three. We got that report of a warship up uh, at long range off to the north. Oh yeah, actually that would make sense because that would be the escorts for the uh, convoy number one heading north. Yes, sir. So they're either crossing with their convoy at that far distance, or they've joined the uh, search. Heading 143. Back there to the right. Start a gentle turn to the right. Oh, I hear him. Oh, 149 fast cruise, so he's making an attack run. Flank speed. Yes, sir. There we go, I hear her right over the top. No depth charges on that run. Interesting. So she came right over the top of us, but then didn't actually drop. Curious. Oh, this guy's on yes, something, though. Destroyer man. Shooting a bunch off. We'll go flank speed, try to get out from underneath. They hit fairly close again. Not right on top of us, but still right in our neighborhood. Let's switch over to the left side. Gentle port turn. Actually, let's come around to 330. Back towards the track of the northbound convoy. Yes, sir. Let's get us solidly under, but just in the shadow of that temperature differential. All 
right, there's one minute. Squeeze out a few extra seconds of speed. Just pushing the envelope here. And back down to one yes, third. Sir. Ahead one third. What's our nearest contact? Bearing 339. Damn, I was just about to say, quiet up there at the moment. Now they're back on the active again. Hmm. Do we experiment? With speed? Yes, sir. Ahead, fly. Yes, I think we might. So if it's true in the game that the escorts can't listen while they're pinging, then we might as well try to get our asses out from underneath this area. Bad guys are opening at 125 short range. So, possibly circling, maybe what's going on up there. We're down to 83% battery. We're definitely draining the battery quickly with the flank speed usage. So, actually, maybe let's just knock it down to standard. Yes, sir. Oh, that's... Okay, no, that's the nearest. They gave me the, the merchant contact, and I thought that was the uh, the nearest sound contact, but it's actually not. We have a... The warship is still the nearest, uh, bearing 085, so that's the other ship now yes, off to our left. So we have one to our left, one to our back right. Still short range, so they haven't quite pinned us down. Oop. Sonar just went away. Hmm. Contemplating backing maneuvers to maybe avoid death charges as well. Yeah, so we have the destroyer is stopped now. The sub chaser is the one doing the circling. That convoy, according to the TDC estimation, is now almost 6,000 yards away. I think we have an attack run. Yes, sir. Runner one, zero. Yes, sir. I hear screws through the hull. Bearing zero three seven. Oh yeah, it sounds like he's right in front of us. I hear his engines starting and stopping, speeding up, slowing down, so he's not real confident. But if they happen to throw a couple of charges over the side, they'll <laughs> they will be right on top of us, so that would be some unfortunate luck for us. Not 
Let's drop it down a few more feet down to 180. Yes, sir. You're dead. No, no charges. I think we have him confused enough. He didn't actually drop anything on that run. All right, no depth charges ever came down from that run. And in fact, a few minutes have gone by now and the escorts are getting further and further away from us. I think we've just broke their lock on us. We've got the destroyer, she's got her ears on, just stationary, she's listening for us, and then the other ship is continuing to circle in larger and larger um, orbits, so I think that we've got them fooled. We just need to continue creeping away. Um, at this point, I don't think we're going to make either one of those um, convoys, but if we can get far enough away, we'll resurface and maybe try to reacquire them. Hello, welcome back. It's about 12 hours later. It's uh, 6 in the morning now. We escaped uh, from the escorts last night, successfully surfaced, and uh, we continued Contact. on our patrol, charging away. our batteries. Bearing. And now, here, 6.22 six. in the morning, we've got another contact out in the front, uh, to the front Contact. right. Merchant, moving away. Bearing, three, one. Long and it's range. another convoy. I have, a, I have a bunch of different screw noises here. Still detecting them all the way out to about 55 degrees. Merchant, moving away. That's a big one. Long range. She's got some big booty screws on her. Yes, sir. New course. One. Eight, all right, over to the right here. You can see the new uh, search pattern I had set up. We're still in these these shipping lanes just off of Formosa. This is a pretty heavy traffic area, so we're sticking around. Let's try to figure out which way these guys are going. We'll set up a course up to the north. Yes, sir. So now that we've heard them, I'm going to bring us up to the surface. It's still dark enough surface. that we should be able surface. to hide surface. in the darkness. Let's turn off this ground here. There we go. Had the music running in the background. So now it's breach, and we'll try to uh, see what we can see up on the horizon. Maybe spot these guys in the early morning light. Yep, there we go. I got a smoke trail. That looks like an escort. Looks like a destroyer there. And there's a couple ships. Another mast directly out in front of us, but very far range. But here's something. That's uh, that's one of the big girls. Okay, so we've been tracking this convoy. We're paralleling their course just keeping them off on the horizon. You can see the sun rising off to our right. That's east, so we are in the shadows. We're on the dark side of the sunrise still, so hopefully that's masking our silhouette. In fact, we've got a good track on them, so I want to move away from them and uh, maybe just track them by their smoke. And then we'll come up and around. Let's lengthen this uh, estimated course line here. We'll just stay up at flank speed and then, you know, hopefully come back around and intercept them right here on their track. Let's make a 1500 yard circle. Yeah, so we'll try to do that. You can see most of them are already over the horizon. Oh my god. These fucking escorts spotted us? God damn it, this guy is beating feet right towards us again. Yep, 
Yeah, I think we've been compromised. Yeah, he's not turning. Fuck! Yes, sir. All right. Down we go. While he's still far away, I don't want to risk being shot. Then if we give him a last known position that's here, maybe he'll go to that spot and we can be far away by the time he gets there. Current depth, one, six, zero. Here's a view from the convoy. There's the escort way out, speeding away towards the possible subcontact. The Japanese ships don't have radar this early, so somebody just had some eagle-eyed spotters, some lookouts on board the ship. They actually saw us. Okay, we put a little bit of space between me and where I submerged, so let's go down to silent running, and we'll just try to coast away. Looks like the destroyer is in the area as well because she's come down, she's got the lights on, and she's searching. So she must be right over where we went down. Contact! Warship! Closing! Bearing! One, one, seven, long range! Another warship at long range, so second escort making her way into the area, peeling away from the convoy. Time has passed, the sun has continued to rise, we're a little bit later in the morning now, we're down at hiding depth, still doing one third, we've just been creeping away from the escorts who are pretty far astern of us now. So shortly I'm going to bring us up to periscope depth, we'll take a look around, and if the coast is clear then I'm going to surface the boat, we'll go back to flank speed and maybe try to catch up to that convoy which now uh, has no escorts, hopefully, so yes, sir. we'll see what we can do with surface that. Surface the boat. Yes sir. Alright, back up on the surface now. Oxygen up to 100%. We're down to 50% battery, so that actually really sucks. We need a lot of time to recharge the batteries on the S-boats. Um, according to our course line here, it's an hour and 50 minutes um, out to that waypoint where we start turning back in. And that's only going to give us a few percents more of uh, a battery power because these batteries charge so slow but that's actually that's saying three hours three and a half hours out to the intercept point and it's 807 now so we'd be looking at like 1130 1140 so we're in the clear for the moment we're surfaced it's a nice day uh, pretty calm seas so we're gonna stay on the surface charge our batteries for as long as we can uh, keep an eye out for aircraft and hopefully those escorts behind us, you know, will we'll stay investigating that area for some time and we can go catch that convoy, you know, before they get back or at least get around ahead of them and with any luck they'll be on the same course and we can intercept them in about three and a half hours and maybe have the perfect shot for torpedoes. We've spotted a merchant. It's about quarter after ten. 
and it looks like we've spotted uh, the same convoy. Yeah, I got a couple of... Where did they just go? I just saw them somewhere. I had a couple of masks. There it is. Just above the horizon and a stack. So pretty far range. Probably out at eight or nine miles. Um, but we're not quite as far ahead of them as I want to be. So I'm going to readjust. Let's add an extra leg to our course here. Because I, I really want to be well and good out in front of them. Yep, there's the rest of the convoy. So this is good news. We're actually just off of the shore from Toko. So if these guys are continuing to the northwest, they're not going to Toko. They're going up into the Taiwan Straits, which means we can continue to track them and hopefully get out ahead of them. Is this guy? He's got a uh, he's got a far aft stack and uh, a really tall front mast. I wonder if that's a um, a tanker. Is it this guy? No, it's not. Is it this guy? No. Oh, now the masts sort of look even, but it's a skinny stack, and then it's uh, it's got the bridge in between the two masts. Sort of just a guess at this range, since you can't even see the hull, but I think maybe it is this medium-old tanker. Possibly. We'll just mark him as such for now. You can see they're only at, uh, they're actually less than 100 degrees off to our right. So yeah, we're not even out ahead of them. Oh, what is this? Our tanker just made some sort of maneuver. What the hell was that? Well, I've continued on on the course. Um, it's possible that that convoy made a sharp turn to the right and actually headed for Toko. Oop, there we go. We do have something out there, though, still. We have a single ship. Uh, looks like he's bearing, like, 8-2. Eight, eight, or right around 8-4, eight, eight, I guess. Yeah, right there. And that's a different ship than uh, I previously was looking at, I'm pretty sure. So, this is very curious. I don't know what's going on. I only see one ship now, and we watched the the previous ship. They were seven miles away from that estimated track. I wonder if the convoy split up. Some of the ships may be turned right to head for the port, and then other single ships have split off to continue up to the northwest. I don't see anything else out here, just this one singular ship. That looks like a freighter, doesn't look like the tanker that I was looking at before. Well, let's see which way she's going. Let's start tracking her. Um, hmm. yes, sir. Periscope let's take a listen. drop down the periscope depth and use our passive or acoustic uh, sonar and try to locate where the rest of the convoy yes, is if it's here or if we just have a lone merchant now We have 
One merchant at Contact. nine five. Merchant closing. Bearing nine zero. Long range. And then we've got something at zero seven one that's super far away. Uh, fast warship. cruise sort of moving sounds away. like a warship. Bearing seven one. Long range. And they're telling me that it's moving away as well. Contact merchant moving away. Bearing moving seven away. eight. Long range. So I am hearing something. There are other ships still out there, but it sounds like if they're all moving away, and they're really, really far away, I think that the bulk of that convoy has turned up to the northeast, and they're heading for the port. We'll make a mark here. If this singular merchant is still heading to the northwest, this is where we will intercept her, which is actually pretty close. Relatively speaking, let's uh, adjust our course to maybe try to intercept that at a perpendicular angle. Yeah, I think we've lost the main convoy at this point. They're so far away, I couldn't even see them through the binoculars up on the surface, so they're they're pretty far out. We are on course to the northeast now, down at 80 feet. Heading up towards uh, the estimated track of these ships, but it sort of looks like our single freighter is not following that track. Looks like maybe she is moving, I don't know, to the west, possibly southwest. So let's come on up to periscope depth and uh, take a peek and we'll see what's going on see if we can identify what direction she's moving there we go 55 feet let's take a look here we may have to come back around I thought she was heading up to the northwest but ooh, ooh, there she is alright which way is the front She's bearing 082 off to our right. Uh, is it a medium modern composite freighter? Yes, sir. New course one. Three, Let's head down four. to the south and just Ahead see. Full. I can't tell if that's the stern or the bow off to the right, although it sort of like looks like maybe it's like a high prow of the ship. Yeah, here she is. That's obviously the bow off to the left and that's higher, so... And actually, she's coming into better view here in the, uh, the scope as well. Medium old? She's got some derayed vents in the back, peeking up over the horizon. Those are the ventilation horns that we see sticking up out of the deck. And the masts sort of look like they're the same. They've got the little triangle. Yeah, I think she's moving down to the southwest, so... So we've lost the whole convoy off to the east. And now we've got a single uh, lone straggler who has split off to head west. So we need to come around and get back on her. Let's, let's plot a new route for her. There we go, Mark 5. Oh yeah, we gotta come all the yes, way sir. around to southwest. Two, Shit. Two. She is heading uh, west, slightly southwest. Okay, let's just grab the uh, let's grab the course tool and just bring us around. What sucks is we have to swing through almost 180 degrees just to get back around to try to intercept her.
So we're on course, we're at flank speed, managing only seven knots under the water. There's our freighter, she's in full view. Let's start taking some bearings on her. 7,000 yards. Moving left to right. We'll put it at, she actually looks like she's right at 90 degrees right now. And what's our range on these bad boys? I always forget, 3,500 yards. So we are double that. And that's not even a good shooting range, that's maximum shooting range. So we have to close. Oh, we gotta close up on her. And I don't know how easy that's gonna be. transfer these guys over to the dive planes. If we can't catch up, once we figure out what her speed is, and I'm giving it a minute here, a minute between uh, sightings, we'll see what the navigator estimates her speed is. If we can't keep up, if she's doing more than seven knots, then I'm thinking that we're going to surface and go after her. Maybe even with a deck gun. The good news is, now that she's separated from the full convoy, there are no escorts. There, what do we got? Down to 6,600, and we estimate 10 knots bearing, or, uh, I always say bearing, and it's not, uh, course of... 266, which would be there. So she's already out to our front left. She's already beyond us, and she's going faster than us by three knots. So we're not going to catch her underwater. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think a, a surface gun attack is looking like our only option. Let's just do a quick sweep here, make sure we don't see any aircraft or escorts. But for the moment, it looks like we're pretty alone out here. Yeah, I don't see any smoke plumes or evidence of other ships. I think we're alone. Let's take one more... Uh, one more bearing here. And we'll see if they still estimate 10 knots. Oh, they actually estimate 12 knots. So, she's going even faster. At 6,500 yards, we're not even close. Not even close. For torpedo shot. And they've got her slightly angled away now. So. Alright, let's move our torpedo men up to the deck gun position. And we'll put the two chiefs uh, up forward. And we'll call battle stations. Bring us up. Yes, sir. Surface the boat. Yes, sir. Surface, surface, surface. Here we go. Conning Tower breaching up onto the surface. We're going to maintain flank speed. 
Gun deck is clear and the crew is moving into position. There's our target just on the horizon off to the left. Yes, sir. Let's specify that I want them to aim for the water line. Let's begin a slight yes, turn Runner. to port. Yes, sir. Man, even on the surface, we're going to be hard pressed to catch up to her. If we can only make 13 knots, if she's really doing 12, that's only a one knot closing speed. Not great. I want to get a, uh, let's use active uh, ranging. Soundman tells us we've got a range of 6180 good range, which is uh, pretty close to what we estimated with the optics of 62. Manning the deck gun now. Up to 60... There's 6,000 yards. Three miles. Three nautical miles. High explosive rounds are loaded. Rounds away. First round, long. Second round's long, too. Bring it back more now. 5,700, or I'm sorry, 53 ish, 100 yards. Yes, sir. Standard propulsion. Oh, we need the extra speed. Propulsion off. We're capping out at 11 knots with only one propeller. There we go. There's a hit. Landed just short of her, but went below uh, the waterline. So that was a good waterline hit at a distance. So now just adjust a couple of hundred yards. Fire again. Nope. Too short. So back up, and then hopefully we've got her bracketed. Rounds away. Solid hit. Right amidships, right near the stack. And she's on fire. Forward hold is burning. She's turning away. Soundman is telling us 5,300 yards, but I don't think that's right. We're ranged in for 49. Well, that was a hit, though. I don't know where exactly. Somewhere on the back, uh, near the back hatch. Oh, she's doing uh, S-turns now, zigzagging to try to avoid us. There's another hit. Yeah, both holds on fire. Huge hole on the uh, superstructure there, right on the bridge. Well, you'd see daylight through it. Black smoke coming up from this uh, from these hold fires. Yes, sir. Hard to board. Hard to board. Yes, sir. Now she's given us a very narrow profile, which I don't like. So hard to port. Bring us around over. We're gonna head back right towards her and close this distance up. Yes, sir. Rudder. Rudder. Yes, sir. Oh, she's going to stop right behind this obstruction. Yes, yep, Hard to she board. sure is. Hard to All right, keep going a couple more extra degrees. Get her around the uh, yes, sir. the nose Rudder. of this thing. There we go. Rudder. Yes, sir. Clear line of sight now. We're at 4,500 yards, rounds away. Let's see what we got. And it was a little short, so recalibrate. Up to about 4,700 yards now. More good hits. Forty-one hundred yards. 
This is just over two nautical miles that we're engaging this freighter. Another hit back aft. If she just keeps pointing her ass at us and we are able to hit it, we might be able to disable her engines. If we can if we can get a shot under the water, under the stern of the ship. Ooh, just like that. Okay, she's still got a propeller, but more of those types of shots and we could maybe damage the propeller and uh, she'd be dead in the water. Good hit on that one. De uh, flaming debris flying off the back of the ship. Another good hit. Looks like the forward fire's out. Aft fire still burning. We're down to 99 high explosive rounds. I don't think the gun alone is going to sink her, but if we can disable her or slow her down... Oh, that was a great hit. Look at that, right on the waterline, aft side. I think we got it. She is Sans Propeller. Blew that fucker right off. She's gonna be dead in the water. Perfect. Swing back around to starboard because I want to come around and uh, set up for perpendicular periscope shot. We can keep peppering her with a uh, with gun rounds until then. Let's get an up to date range. We're down to 2,600 yards, and we'll let the AI get some target practice in. Yeah, she's definitely not doing 12 knots anymore. They're estimating 5 as she coasts down. She's sitting a little yes, ass low in the water. Yes, sir. She's got a draft of 24 feet, so we'll set torpedoes at 14. And we're just going to let the... Uh, I'm gonna let the gun crew, like I said, get some gun practice. I'm super paranoid about aircraft. This attack has taken long enough that she would have had time to radio for help. So she's probably sent an SOS out there and we're not that far from Formosa. So my biggest concern right now is gonna be aircraft. So hopefully our lookouts are gonna be eagle-eyed. So I do not wanna have an aircraft sneak up on yes, us. There we go, that was a good hit. The more practice they can get in now and uh, get their skills up, the better they'll be later on a non-stationary target. Oh, that round had a that had a curve to it. Did you see that? It sort of arced around the uh, the yes, stern sir. of the ship. Hard to start. Hard to start, yes sir. That was a hit. I think we'll go ahead and secure them now. Yes, yes, I don't want to use up all my yes, ammunition sir. on one ship in case we need it later. But uh, that was a couple of good shots to get uh, to get some practice in. Look at that, she's on fire, she's sitting low in the water, huge holes throughout the superstructure and on the hull. Looks like she's burning from the middle uh, of the ship now as well, not just from the, from the forward and aft holds anymore.
estimated speed is zero. She's, she is uh, coasted to a stop dead in the water. And as we come around to this port turn, it, it'll be wide enough that I think it's going to line us right up for a good torpedo shot. Anything in the skies? We'll just keep checking on that. Terrible damage here on the freighter. Ooh, direct hit. Right amidships. Aircraft spotted. I fucking knew it. Bearing 211, long range. So, yep, coming in from behind. Down we go. Oh, I just saw him. Now I've lost him. Alright, you know, it doesn't matter. Clear the bridge. We just need to get down, down, down. Yeah, I can't. I spotted him for a second, but now I've lost him. Oh, there he is. He's awfully close according yes, to the map. Clear the gun. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's way out there just to the east. See that? He's circling on the far side of the of the merchant. Yes, sir. Rudder. Rudder. Yes, sir. Let's get these guys off the gun. Get them off the, uh, off the deck. In case we do have a bomb hit. Yes, sir. New deck. One, eight, eight. Current deck. Dive, four, dive. Zero. Getting us nice and deep to get underneath uh, bomb impacts in case they circle back around. Current deck. Six, zero. Yes, sir. New course. The weather is nice enough that even at this depth, they're likely to see us underneath the uh, underneath the waves and try to attack us. So I want to stay deep until the last minute, until we're ready to fire. Current depth, one, zero, zero. Current depth, one, four, zero. Hmm. All right, not picking her up on the hydrophone. No internal machinery noises, I guess, that we're hearing. So why don't we hit her with the active sonar? Let's, uh, so she's about there. Ping away, and we get a return. So what is that? That's, uh, 1, one 10, 20, 30, so like 1, th so 13, 20? Yes, sir. Periscope depth. 1,300 yards. Yes, sir. She's off our forward port quarter there, so back up to periscope depth. And I have no idea what the status of that aircraft is up there. He could be circling. He might have left. God, my teeth are just sort of on edge because I'm expecting a bomb hit any minute. And now we're coming back up. TDC says that we should be completely perpendicular with the ship right in front of us, and uh, it's not quite... Okay, so it's 20 degrees to my left. Oh, actually, no, that's exactly what the TDC says. Yes, sir. Perfect. New course. One. One. Yes, sir. Oh, I guess it's not completely perpendicular. The, uh, 
the angle's a little off, but it's a stationary target, so. There we go, that's a little more accurate. Yes, sir. We'll come over to the right just a little bit. I don't want the torpedo to hit and go glancing off and not explode, so make sure that we're uh, as perpendicular as we can be to avoid dud torpedoes. Hmm, no sign of that aircraft. Um, so we'll take it. I don't know where they went. Let's try to take advantage of this, uh, these free moments that the plane has given us. Yes, sir. We'll drop the scope down just a little bit, yes, in sir. case that aircraft is circling out there somewhere. Try to minimize them seeing our periscope. Okay, one more bearing on the ship. I'm ready to fire. I think we're close as we need to be, so let's set two degrees left. Tube one's ready to go. Fire one! There we go. Torpedo is away. Switching to tube three, we'll take a two degree right shot. 14 feet. Mm. Yeah, Firing two degrees. Three. Fire three. Torpedo is loose. Torpedo in the water. Out they go. Here they come. Looks like they're going to be right on target. Yes! Torpedo impact. Torpedo impact. Aft. And the second one hits right in the bow. Jesus, she is finished. Yes, sir. Hard to starboard. Ahead, stand, yes, sir. She was already sinking from the from the gun rounds. I think those two torpedoes probably just finished her off. Let's go uh, 90 degrees out to the right. New course. Two, four, yes, sir. We'll parallel her uh, her course. She and we'll return back station. to our normal watch rotation because I think that that is going to be it for that ship. I think we're basically out of the, uh, the combat situation at this point. We'll just keep an eye on her just in case. Make sure that she sinks and get confirmation. But yeah, look at that. The entire aft deck is underwater. The main deck is down. Submerged. Oh, there's the death sounds. She is definitely sinking. We are on our way down also to avoid any aircraft bombs in case they show up. Freaking deck gun still angled off to the left. We'll have to straighten that out once we finally surface. The, uh, the guys left the gun in a hurry. And there she goes. Our target slips underneath the waves, leaving debris and a small oil patch as she fades down into the depths. Passing through 
So finally, after days of cat and mousing it with three different convoys all over the south end of Formosa here, getting the hell depth charge out of us several times, coming through otherwise uh, unscathed, but just losing several opportunities for good for good torpedo hits, we finally eked out a single victory with a surfaced gun run on this freighter. But I will take it. We we got the hits in. We disabled her from long range. Blew her screw off <laughs> and then finish her off with torpedoes we even had an aircraft sighting but it just left the area apparently and now we're nice and deep making our way out i think we're going to be safe so we're going to wrap it up for this episode and uh, as we plot our course back down to the uh, patrol area down here in the, the south end of formosa we will see you next time Come back and uh, let's see how the rest of Patrol 2 goes here in the USS S-38. We still have a belly full of torpedoes, so hopefully second half of the patrol we can uh, find enough targets to put them into before heading home. Uh, not to Manila at this point, I think. Pretty sure we're going to be rerouted to go somewhere else. So that's going to be something else to consider is finding out what our home port is even going to be and then making sure that we have enough fuel to get there so all of that next time thank you for joining me hope you like this one we'll see you then